In SpaceX, a historic space in space watch rather, a historic SpaceX flight is on its way to the International Space Station. The four crew members had successful liftoff had a successful liftoff from the Kennedy Space Center this morning. Two astronauts are from the US, one is from France, and one is from Japan. Mark Strassman explains why this launch is so significant. The astronauts were met with cheers on their way to the launch pad this morning. They even got a send off from SpaceX CEO Elon Musk. We can see the astronauts inside the crew access arm. Inclement weather postponed the launch yesterday. But this morning, Endeavor launches once again. The international crew, which includes two Americans, is spacebound on a mission that's the first of its kind. We have just passed through Max Q. Around two and a half minutes after liftoff, already traveling more than 4,000 miles per hour, the reused first stage boosters separated. More than seven minutes after that, the crew entered orbit 125 miles above Earth. Ahead of today's launch, they told us they're comfortable using the recycled hardware. Now you're flying on a reused vehicle. Well, at least it performed once, right? At least it did the job that it was designed for once and everything worked fine the first time around. Go NASA, go SpaceX, Godspeed, Bob and Doug. NASA astronaut Bob Behnken can vouch for the capsule. He flew in it to the space station last year. This time, it's his wife, crew member Megan MacArthur. They have a seven-year-old son, Theo. What does your son think about all the unusual travel both his parents do for work? He has had, of course, a long duration exposure to all of this. Of course, he recently saw his father launch and then stay on the International Space Station for two months. Now, you know, it's mom's turn and I'm going to be gone for six months. And when he talks about it, he talks about, well, he's going to go next. Wow. So I want to talk more about uh, the launch with former NASA astronaut and International Space Station Commander Leroy Chow. Thank you so much for joining us um, for this. Uh, you are an expert. You've lived this. So we heard in Mark's piece that the rocket and the cap capsule used in the launch, they've both been used before. How significant is that for the future of space travel? Well, this is pretty huge. I mean, this is the first time we've had a reusable vehicle uh, since the space shuttle. And so we've seen now that uh, SpaceX, I mean, they've designed these vehicles to be reused. So both the spacecraft and the first stage booster had been used previously, in fact, to launch the crew, uh, the, the first crew into space. And now it's been reused successfully. And uh, I anticipate these components will be refurbished and reused yet again. So this is one way, of course, uh, that, that that SpaceX and Elon Musk are dramatically bringing down the cost of launching astronauts to and from low Earth orbit. So it's it's a big deal. Yeah, um, the crew is scheduled to dock at the International Space Station tomorrow. So in the meantime, how are they spending their time? Well, in the meantime, they're slowly adjusting their orbit to match that of the ISS before they begin their approach to a dock. And so, you know, there's not a lot to do right now except to kind of relax a little bit, get acclimated to space, even though uh, several of these people have flown before. Uh, they, you know, there is a little bit of an adapt adaptation period, but uh, uh, really it's kind of a little bit of time off. There's some maneuvers to monitor and adjust, but uh, it's a pretty quiet time for a, a little, little bit for several hours and then uh, then things will get busy as they begin their procedures to approach and dock to the station. I guess because there's, there's no moving around or anything, right? Like it's not like you can sort of break out a deck of cards and start playing. Are, are they just sort of sitting there next to each other? Well, there is some room in the in the vehicle. I mean, actually, it's not uh, it's not a uh, it, it's a fairly roomy capsule, if you will, not as roomy as a space shuttle mm -hmm. was. But there's room to move around and to uh, you know do things. And uh, I don't know if they brought a deck of cards, but if they did, they could try to play cards. <laughs> although in zero g, it'd be hard to kind of keep it all together. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure they've got a few things to do and some procedures to take care of. But by and large, they can look out the windows, take some photographs as well, and just prepare for the docking. So once they do get there to the International Space Station, the crew members already have multiple spacewalks planned for their time on board. Um, what can you tell us about the work that they will be doing while they're on board the space station? 
While they're on board, they'll be doing a, a long duration, you know, most long duration stints are around six months. So they've been already kind of had their, uh, uh, set their expectations for that. As you mentioned, there's a lot of things that they've been trained to do, including spacewalks, including experiment procedures, maintenance and repair operations. So uh, every aspect of space station operations, they've been very well trained and, uh, you know, they'll just kind of execute the timeline as it goes. So this process has become incredibly efficient, it seems like to me, um, though every time I hear about astronauts going to the International Space Station, it still seems like an, a miracle again. But you served as commander and NASA science officer of Expedition 10 aboard the International Space Station. That was 2004 to 2005. How are missions, is that your puppy? Sorry about that. <laughs> no. Well, clearly, clearly someone has a lot to say about the evolution of space travel, but we will have to talk to him or her another time. I want to ask you, how have the missions to the International Space Station evolved and changed since you were there? Well, the space station has gotten a lot bigger than we were still in the, you know, in the build process when I was there. Uh, we were flying during the time when the space shuttle was still grounded after the Columbia accident, and we had to get the shuttle flying again to get the major com rest of the major components up there and installed on the station. Now the station is much bigger. They've got a bigger crew complement, more capability. Uh, we were definitely more in the maintenance and repair mode when I was there. Now there's more time for experiment operations and, and research uh, opportunities, which is why we. Uh, we operate the space station. So uh, a little bit different now, but uh, I'm still uh, very proud and happy to have been there kind of during the first part of this. As you mentioned, I was uh, commander of Expedition 10, and now we're all the way up to, uh, I, I even kind of lose track of which number we're on, but quite a, quite a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Um, does your dog have a space-related name? Uh, no, uh, Hope and Alfred have two little uh, little toy poodles, but uh, uh, they're usually pretty good. But even in this early morning, sometimes they, they can uh, hear better than I can. They can hear people and other dogs outside, and uh, <laughs> apologies for that. <laughs> it's very cute. The, these are the times we are living in. Uh, Leroy Chow, thank you so much um, for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Thank you.